Hello and welcome to Travel Beans. I'm Alex and this is Emma. And in today's video we want to show you how it's possible to travel for free in one of the most expensive countries in the world. We're going to Japan! In the previous episodes we started to explore different ideas on how we could make a travel lifestyle financially sustainable. We got off to what seemed like a successful start with free accommodation and food in exchange for promotional video material in both the Maldives and Sri Lanka. But we ended up doing so much work that we got completely burnt out and needed a break from it, aka not the most sustainable option. In Korea, we found that couch surfing was a great combination of both helping to save money and meeting locals, which led to some really fun and unique experiences. So we decided to give it another go after arriving in Osaka. We're in our couch surfers flat at the moment in Osaka and she is taking us on a food tour of the city today. Seeing a place with a local definitely has its perks, with finding all the best places that only the locals know about. And the first food on our list for Japan was, of course, sushi. Okay, so here is the slow train, and then if you order on this, it comes to you flying across here. Actually, something that I remember more than the food was the beer machine. We need one of those in our house. <laughs> the beer machine. <laughs> then, so I put it in here. Yeah. And then put the coin. Okay. okay. And then press here. Yep. What? <laughs> it's so sweet. And it does the bubbles. Woo, cheers. I'm gonna take on a sushi challenge. Masa is gonna order something for me that she knows 100% I will not like, and she's laughing. She's ordering it now, I have no idea what it's gonna be. Have you said that in English? Fish intestines. No. And of course it's wrong. No. <laughs> I'm really, really scared. Go on out, as long as you know what it is. It could be good, it could be good. Don't smell it. <laughs> Fish intestines. Okay, here it goes. Wait. One bite. <laughs> 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 I still have flashbacks to how gross that was. After Al recovered, we spent the afternoon soaking in the city. We're just exploring the local market. There's some pretty weird stuff here. You got a crab burger with a literal full crab that's been deep fried. So this here is puffer fish. You need a special license to be able to sell this because it's so poisonous. Poor little baby octopuses. It's 30 pounds for 12 strawberries. 30 pounds. Staying in Osaka was only a short train ride to a place that had been on our bucket list for a while. We are going to Kyoto. After a beautiful day in Kyoto and our last evening with our couch surfing host, we headed back to the airport where we took a short flight to Japan's capital. It's bloody Pikachu! Look this guy! I've lost Emma while looking for Pikachu. At this point, we decided to take a little break from couch surfing. Yeah, I, to be quite honest, I think it's fine to do in short sort of visits but when you're doing so much of it I just find it really socially exhausting to be honest you can never really fully switch off because it's not your house it's someone else's house so you've got to be respectful and you want to be helpful and also we're British so we feel guilty a hundred percent of the time for no reason so just being in someone's house <gasps> I don't know, it's just like a constant feeling of unease. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't matter how nice they are. No. <laughs> it 
So after we decided to stop couch surfing for a bit, we found ourselves the cheapest box room that Tokyo had to offer and we spent most of the time out exploring the city. <laughs> This is really crazy. Today I am dragging Emma to the Pokemon Megastar. I have heard rumours that you can find a Pikachu riding a Charizard. Now how cool is that? We made it! And there is the Charizard with the Pikachu riding him. How awesome is that? Emma, what do you think of the Pokemon? It's great! She loves it! She bloody loves it! Something on our bucket list for Japan was to see Mount Fuji. Since we were there in winter, hiking wasn't an option, so instead we found a place where we could see it from a distance. We're in Oshina Hakai, which is near Mount Fuji, but we're not having much luck today. The clouds have decided to cover the mountain, so we're just wandering around this little village and it's kind of got a bit of a Hopperton feel. All around the town there's lots of little ponds dotted around and they're all crystal clear and I believe the reason for this is because all the water runs down from Mount Fuji. Okay, right here is where the water from the mountain comes and they put a challenge here for you to say try and hold your hand in it for 30 seconds. Three, two, one, go. Oh, oh. ah, that's cold. That's horrible. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Well, we did it. I can't feel my hand. Now what? <laughs> Brilliant. Let's have a cold hand. Being a mage geek, I saw that there's a game called the Barber Cup and they are hanging Pokemon. So I'm going to try and rid myself of Pikachu. Come on now, you can do it. We've got to get a train right now, but that is worth the £20 that it costs. We're coming home to England, baby! Unfortunately, the cloud is not parting, uh, so we're here at Fuji Station with our firstborn, son of Alex, looking over here, and you can just see it poking through, which is really nice. So we're just going to sit back and watch this and then go home. Subscribe to Travel Beans. <laughs> but after a few days of burning through our budget in Tokyo, it was time to try something new. Today, we're heading to Nagano, which is a small town in the mountains of Japan. We're going on this bus, and why are we going? We're going because we have a job in a hostel. Um, we're gonna work six hours a day for free food, free accommodation, and nearby we get to explore the area. And there's something there that we've been wanting to see for a really, really long time. Snow monkeys! Snow monkeys! Ever since I was little and I watched Attenborough and there's snow monkeys and they're all frozen on their face. I used to call them frozen monkeys. And they're sat in the <laughs> hot springs and they just look awesome and I wanna go and play with them. And I'm gonna play with them. We're gonna play with them. We're gonna play with them. <laughs> We've arrived here in Nagano and we've realised we don't have any money. We have 1,000 yen, which is about five pounds, eight dollars. And we've tried a few ATMs and they're only for Japanese cards only. So now we're getting a little bit worried because we have to get a bus, uh, let's get a train and then a bus to the place that we're staying, which is sort of in the mountains, maybe a half an hour away from here. And there is no ATM there, no way of getting money. So we have to get money now. I'm going to spend the last bit of money at this delicious looking bakery and get myself some cookies and then that will leave us with no money and then we're going to risk it. Mm, that was good. We are deliciously broke now and we found two ATMs. Yes. You can buy more cookies. More cookies. We just arrived at Yudanaka. This is the last stop on the train that we had to get before getting the bus. Three stops to our hostel that we're going to work at. As soon as you get here, there's pictures of the snow monkeys everywhere. It's really, really cold. And I'm very 
very excited. We now have a little treasure hunt to try and find our accommodation, but first impressions of our new home are very cool. We found this hostel job on a website called Work Away, which is a place that you can find different projects and jobs around the world to help with in exchange for accommodation and food. This was the first time using this website and we'd arranged to help with some hotel renovations in an onsen village. The work itself was actually fine. It was mainly just cooking and cleaning and a little bit of actual renovation work. But it was six hours a day of manual labor. <laughs> <laughs> in exchange for extremely basic living situation yeah. with food. Yeah, it wasn't ideal. But on the flip side, getting to experience life in a sleepy Japanese mountain village was worth it and it turned out to be an absolute dream. Well, it would be a dream if you weren't tired after a six hour shift six days a week. Well, there is that. <laughs> Today's my first day working in eight months. Been cleaning out onsens, cleaning up leaves for some reason, and uh, went to put some rubbish away, and there was two monkeys. So I'm gonna go and see them. So I don't know if you heard that, but there was a van playing a really weird noise driving past and I found out that it's the tofu man so it's a less exciting version of what we would have as the ice cream man I guess. This is the place that we completely fell in love with Japanese hot springs. They're primarily used for relaxing but they're also thought to have a bunch of health benefits due to the minerals in the water. Now it says on here that each one has different healing properties so number one stomach and intestines number two eczema number three cut scar and skin disease and number nine cures all sicknesses why would you not just go to number nine <laughs> and cure all of your illnesses instead of going individually that's the point it can be a little bit intimidating in japan in general because it feels like just by breathing you're gonna <laughs> offend someone because they have a lot of like social rules that you kind of need to follow mm. one being that you need to be naked <laughs> but in the onsen specifically <laughs> yeah. not just walking around tokyo <laughs> not all the time <laughs> well, i'm sure there's parts of tokyo where you can do that <laughs> yeah so it's a little bit of like a foreign idea i think for a lot of especially british people we're not usually getting our kit off in front of complete strangers okay so the first thing that they probably don't tell you is we are in the mountains and it is really really cold in this clothes uh you can see a little flash for everyone uh, so I'm going to go in the onsen right now, it's 42 degrees, and uh, here we go. And since I can hear someone splashing around in there, so I'm going to go and join him. See you in a bit. Now he's gone, I can take you into the bathhouse. So here we go. So this is where I've just had my bath, and as you can see here, there's just a thin wall separating the men and the women. Hello. I've just got out, and the guy that was in here has stole my shoes, look. Those are his shoes. They look like my shoes, but they're his shoes. Okay, we're at number seven, and the guy from the last one who stole my shoes is here. Look, that's my shoes. That's his shoes. So I'm gonna swap them back around. So, the guy, when he went to put his shoes on, he was like, wait a minute, in Japanese, I'm translating, because obviously I understand what he's saying. He's like, wait a minute, these don't look like the shoes I've stolen. Uh, excuse me, sir, have you got the shoes that I stole from you? And I said, oh, sorry, excuse me. Here are the shoes you stole from me. And he went, it's okay, have my horrible shoes instead. So, I now have to wear his shoes, and I can't do it again because he knows. How do you know? And while we were there, we finally got to tick something else off our bucket list. So we've got up early and we're going to... The Snow Monkey Park. Yeah. It's a beautiful walk here, but it's all uphill. 
So you monkeys better be worth it. You better be there. They're not even always there. What if they're not there? What a ruined day. Oh, you better not ruin my day, monkeys. Weirdly, as soon as we get to the reception area, it goes from this to this. We're here, got our tickets, and we're about to go and see snow monkeys. I've only waited since I saw Attenborough to see this. I'm so excited. Once that old man made these monkeys really famous, oh, tourism boomed. Here they come, They're right next to you. <laughs> Emma's behind you. Emma, there's a monkey behind you. Get in the water. You look so cold, monkey. You look so cold. I have loved hanging out with these guys and they have loved hanging out with me, haven't you? Come on, tell them. Tell them. Okay, I don't know why I won't tell you, but he was just saying to me a minute ago that Travel Beans is the best thing they've ever seen on YouTube. So, don't touch the nuts. If you've never considered going to Japan before, like please, please do. It is so good, it needs to be on your radar. And if you've been, leave in the comments, how good is it? So in conclusion of the traveling for free aspect of Japan, couch surfing is a really good one, but obviously you can't be doing that long term because it can get tiring. Yeah, personally um, I would recommend that that's, if you're doing a two week holiday, Squeeze in some couch surfing yeah. and meet someone awesome and local. I personally don't think it should be used as a way to travel for a really long period of time. Mm -hmm. But of course, it's up to anyone. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like the cheap stuff, I think attracts a lot of people being able to save so much money but really it's about the social stuff and so, in turn it kind of gets more expensive because you spend yeah. <laughs> more than you would in a hotel because you're probably going to buy them lunch and go and do things with yeah, them because they want to show you stuff so you're going to spend a lot of money yeah exactly also work away is awesome and you'll see in a future video that like it can be really really <laughs> awesome but you're working in another country yeah and it kind of detracts especially if you're tired after working from why you're even there in the first place yeah. so it wasn't a sustainable thing for us definitely and it's worth remembering that your time is as valuable as money okay so don't get too sidetracked with oh this is free i can live for free because your time is super important mm -hmm. also not all work away jobs are manual labor you can actually do stuff that you're specifically interested in like video work for example yeah. and then you can actually at least be helping your skills at the same time as getting your free accommodation. I mean maybe you just love manual labor. Maybe you bloody love it in and which case head over we to the place for you. <laughs> So please leave in the comments down below, would you like to try something like work away? What about couch surfing? Does living in a stranger's house sound weird to you? Would you be naked around a bunch of random people? <laughs> Maybe that's something you do on the weekends. <laughs> Not even at the spa. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video or you found it helpful, give it a Give it one of those. <laughs> and subscribe and hit the notification bell because more videos are always coming. And then everything is ticked and ready for me to... Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. And beans out! <laughs>